hello and welcome to Supreme Commander Forge Alliance Forever. Two familiar faces now. Thomas Hyatt and Montana. Montana is UEF. Thomas is Seraphim and we're on point of reach. I haven't mentioned yet that we've gone back to the seven map map pool. Tokido is doing some A-B testing on the whether we're going to have a larger map pool in this or this size so there'll be a poll after this map pool I believe and I would encourage people to vote for whichever I prefer and that is the 30 map map pool Montana not making any pigeons before the hydro. Thomas is making two. I think one pigeon is fine. I think two is not that good because it slows in your mouse too much. One extra pigeon means you get a bit more income faster, a bit more power income. But two pigeons means these mexes are a lot slower, really. And you kind of need that mass. Like, once the transport lands and you're trying to proxy build stuff, uh, the mass does actually become an issue. You certainly don't have enough to upgrade, and sometimes you might stall anyway. So, Montana already has a mass advantage right now. And he actually has his hydrocarbon faster. See, expansion wise, there's a lot of mixes above your base or below if you're on top. And generally, you want to send just one engineer. I would say the first engineer, well, the first engineer should go to the hydro. Or actually, if you make one pigeon, then I guess you can send the first engineer up the arm. And then the second engineer can probably get to the Hydra at the same time as the ACU, so you don't waste time there. But uh, you want to expand here quickly, maybe grab some tree groups as you're going along, because there's a lot of mexes here and they're the closest to you. So this is the best expansion you have. So you want to prioritize this with your... These are okay, but it's just three mexes. You get, get some reclaim afterwards, maybe build a naval factory afterwards, but... It's not as high priority as these maxes, and then over here, we have a long distance before we get anything out of expanding in this direction, but it is very important that you send engineers here so that you can secure it, and in the end you do get a lot of maxes. Now, we have transport filling up rapidly. Montana has not gone for a first transport, he's gone for scout first, followed by three interceptors so far and now a bomber so i think we need another air scout as well after that there's so much ground to cover and then we should see the transport thomas is has not sent an engineer here because he had planned to expand oh look at all this reclaim getting the tree groups so he's gonna drop an engine here he's gonna drop an engineer here Two engineers here, in fact, and then three right on the edge, so they drop as fast as possible to this location. And Montana is only now caught on with his interceptors. He has the attack order, and the other inties are assisting this one because this one has the order. So he, yeah, he's now taking control and is manually moving them so they get there a bit faster. But oh, he's changed his order. In fact, he wants to drop. On the base, Montana, meanwhile, his transport is only leaving his base now. There's a bomber coming for these Inties. And they're not split very well. And they're building a mechs rather than a factory. So I think this might end badly. Oh! Oh, he almost lost all three, but he loses two. And that's bad enough. Now, if we look at the mass, far faster expansion from Thomas. Dropping here was great, 
and he's still dodging actually with this engineer. Bomber drops another, and that's it. He has nothing on this island now. Montana, meanwhile, similarly is dropping parts of his island, his main expansion, to expand faster, and then dropping here. Now it's much safer for Montana to have spread his engineers out. Because he knows that Thomas almost certainly does not have a transport here because he knows where Thomas's transport is. It's pretty dangerous for Thomas to drop half his build power on the way to this location. For not only this bomber, but uh, if Montana just drops fast and drops six engineers here and Thomas has three, then Thomas just loses this for sure. No doubt. There's no bomber support for him or anything, so very risky to drop that much build power on the way probably better to drop it on the way back slower expansion but uh, safer uh, in the case of both of them dropping the same place so in the early game Montana really it's been rewarded heavily for the aggression with the bomber it has four kills the transport is dead, he has this expansion safely, he see he's actually doing it very safely by making a factory, only now making mexes, making the hydra as well, it's a great boost for his economy because power is a big problem because there are so many mexes. And now we have a second transport for Montana and he's expanding to this location, I don't see any transport from Thomas and he has a lot of trouble with air now circling looking to stop expansion for him one thing Thomas does have is Seraphim and that means he has Phobos so sending uh, Phobos across here I think would have actually been very good and slowed could have actually denied the expansion that Montana's doing right now if he had sent some Phobos across early on they're really strong in this map you can spread them all across the place oh here's Thomas's plan he wants to make a proxy base with his commander that's not going to get stopped by a T1 bomber Montana trying to keep using his transports dropping all across the map to expand faster very good use of them and this transport may actually spot the commander. Now there are two factories gone up. That's quite nice and safe again. So if there is a proxy that he doesn't spot immediately. He's not stuck on one single factory. Which is not very good. And would leave him vulnerable to a proxy like this. Now he should. Seeing a Selene, he knows that there should be a factory that that came out of. Let's see what Montana sees. There's the factory, and now he can react by making more factories on this location. You can see they're already queued up. PD is pretty good too, but you don't want to overinvest in that. Units are much better, and PDs aren't going to stop the Phobos too well. And here come the Phobos, yes. One thing about Seraphim Arty is that it has the same build time as the other artillery but it's more expensive in mass so one one factory seraphim factory spamming seraphim arty uh, is pretty expensive so you can see it drains minus five mass here it's because it has adjacency this one uh, yeah I think that's because it has adjacency it should be usually minus six rather than minus four for um, other factions and for tanks usually proxy naval build power here on the side island we have very little navy so far but actually Thomas has paused his T2 naval uh, upgrade and he has gone for T2 air he's getting his T2 pigeon upward about 11 minutes and still no T2 from Montana in any capacity. Just filling his base with T1 pigeons. 
you definitely want to be moving to T2P gens right now for that efficiency they're much more efficient I think it's about around 50% more efficient than T1P gens so it's a big deal and also can build it faster and with more assist on it and stuff Opens up a lot of options for more airplay, commander upgrades, and the like. A lot of ecoing on this map so far, but Thomas is at a real disadvantage. I mean, commander upgrade would be probably necessary to take this back. Now we have a, a lot of factories built, and that would be totally sufficient to hold onto this island right now. A lot of tanks already out. And a lot of inties for Montana. He seems to have every advantage right now. And that is the key. You know, he played the early game very well. And the early game is where most games are won and lost. It's just in the first... You know, early game would be like first five, six, seven minutes. Where you see how the initial expansion goes, how fast is it? Uh, oh, T2 drop filled with Phobos. That's going to destroy all these mechs now. None of them are actually upgrading or have been upgraded, so it's not as painful as it could be. But could move down here and get some get some kills. Overall, maybe. I wonder if there's better targets. There doesn't seem to be, and we have very little air now from Thomas. I think he just... Did he lose an air fight here? Or... Certainly must have lost an air fight very recently. Oh my goodness. Don't build lines of T2P gens. <laughs> they will blow up and kill each other. So he really desperate to get back this island and unsurprisingly because Montana just has more map control for a lot of the game so what oh is he actually gonna die here it looks like there should be torp bombers coming in after these gunships I think and that might be it but uh, how could you actually take back this map control when you've lost it well as I said before he could have had a fobo or a couple of Phobos across here early on to maybe catch uh, the drops that are coming. Uh, Com drop is really good on this map, so maybe he sees that you can that he's he's lost this expansion next to that bomber. Then I think at that point he can try and prepare a Com drop for T2 and then choose his target so he could come drop here secure this or this or even here or even the main base is a target now obviously there's amounts of danger differ depending on the target but that's one option you could take for taking an expansion a T2 commander drop there is very hard to dislodge uh, another way would be, well, multiple drops, so dropping engineers, if he can get a proxy base, that's good, but if he can also use bombers to kill enemy build power, and then also perhaps drop tanks uh, to help out his proxy, or spam Phobos. Or say, instead of walking to here and building a proxy here with his commander, could walk straight to the base of the commander and then have engineers build a proxy elsewhere on the island. Also, you know, a gun upgrade would help, T2 would help. Uh, vanilla T1 comp is, well, it's difficult. He just gave Montana too much time to react by moving to here and then Montana got all these factories up thanks to all the eco he had. 
And now it does look very difficult for Thomas. What can he go for? Well, he could go for some snipe. He could go for T3 air. Although it's not likely to work. He does have T2 navy. But this poor... Please don't let this poor cruiser die to two T1 subs. That would be very sad. Looks like he's aiming at factories with this cruiser. Oh god, it is gonna die, isn't it? It's fucking dead. I think you can ground fire T1 subs with cruiser missiles. That might be one way to try and save them. <laughs> if somebody does that, please send me a replay. If they save a cruiser from T1 subs by ground firing them, that would be amazing. But we have T2 Navy from Montana as well. A lot of T1 subs. It looks like he's just going for this commander with T1 subs. Thomas retreats to his cruiser. Seraphim cruiser is glorious for killing interceptors. And torp bombers. The flak is very good. It also has a faster muzzle velocity gun as well is quite good and Thomas is finished off so there we saw the early game just the early game victory with this bomber eventually leads to this scenario where Montana just has a, a larger advantage maintains air control oh that's a big waste of mass <laughs> but uh yeah, Thomas was never able to get this back, didn't quite manage it. Montana held on to it, held on to air control for all the game, and didn't let anything get out of hand. He maintained he maintained an eco advantage as well. And of course, if you have more mexes, you can eco more efficiently. You don't have to move to storages or T3 mexes for longer. So, nicely played. Montana just ground that one out after the after the nice early game. So keep playing. Keep uh yeah, send me replays you have and Yeah, go spam some ladder. And check links in the description as well. Thanks for watching. See you next time.